I want to do a quick example, a really simple one, of a quantum wave function calculation. Wave functions, as we know, are a way of representing how a particular quantum state depends on the position of the particle. And so in particular, if I have some state psi sub e, and I write it as a quantum ket, a quantum state vector ket, psi sub e, ket, uh, and I ask the question, are you located at position x by meeting that ket with a bra for position x, that will give me a function. It will give me a value for every value of x of what psi sub e of x is. So that's a function. Uh, that ba that's the background. We all know that. The idea is, okay, let's say I have a psi of x, a psi sub e of x. Uh, I'm going to assume in some silly case that this is an energy eigenfunction for some particular system. This is kind of unlikely for a realistic eigenfunction, but bear with me. So this is an energy eigenfunction. I'm going to choose it to be this function that I've drawn here. It's sort of a, it's zero outside of a sort of box of size L. Inside there's some funny potential energy that makes this the right energy eigenfunction where it is just a straight line, proportional to x. In particular, the square root of 12 over L cubed times x is the function between minus L over 2 and L over 2. That's my function psi e. So it, the point is, for the particular system that I'm considering, make-believe weird system. Uh, for that system, if I measured the energy of a particle in this state, I would always get the value E, energy E. All right, so that's an energy eigenfunction, and I'm going to start in a state that is not that function. I'm going to start in this initial state, psi of x equal to some constant A for x between 0 and L over 2, and 0 everywhere else. I've drawn that here, uh, between 0 and L over 2, it's a constant, otherwise it's 0. And what I want to ask is, what is the probability that if this is the initial state of my particle and I measure its energy, what is the probability that this will give me a value of E corresponding to that eigenfunction, that energy eigenfunction, that energy state? That's my question. To answer that question, I've got to do two things. Uh, step one is going to be that I need to normalize my state psi because what I've given right now is not a normalized state. I've made no effort to normalize it. It's just I said it's a constant in this region, but I've not normalized it. Step two is going to be to compute, anytime we do probabilities, we're going to compute a probability amplitude. I want to compute the amplitude to measure state psi e if I start in state psi. And that's my second step. That's that, that, those are the two steps I need to do. So first, to normalize psi, I need to figure out what value of a, my constant a, will make this a normalized state. Let's do that. The normalization condition for psi is pretty simple. It is that the integral from minus infinity to infinity of psi of x squared dx has to equal 1. That's normalization. For any quantum wave function, that's the normalization condition. And I can do that. I can just say, okay, this integral, well, if I'm integrating this squared, squaring it just makes a go to a squared, absolute value of a squared, really. Uh, I'm drawing this as a real valued function, so the absolute square doesn't really matter much. So this is going to be the integral of a squared dx from 0 L over 2, because it's 0 everywhere else. I, you know, it's integrating over here is going to be 0. Integrating over here going to be 0. So there we go. Um, hey, look, that's just asking the area under a flat line curve. That's just a squared times L over 2. And so if that has to equal 1 for normalization, I can solve for A. I say that my normalization constant A is equal to um, the square root of 2 over L. That way, if a squared will be 2 over l, that gives me 1. Okay, so now I have normalized my function. I've normalized psi. I know what value of a I need. The next thing I need to do is do the computation of the bracket, the probability amplitude, the quantum amplitude, to start of something that starts in state psi and is measured to be state psi sub e. And for that, we just refer to the definition of that in our, uh, in, in our quantum mechanical language, namely the bracket of psi e with psi can be written as the integral from minus infinity to infinity. That was infinity. It was supposed to be. Wow, what a terrible infinity. Okay, minus infinity to infinity of the bra state that star is a complex conjugate. 
pretty unimportant here because this is all real valued, but that times psi of x dx. That's my integral. Uh, so, oh boy, I, to do this integral, I'm going to have to multiply those two together. Uh, if I plug that in, that's equal to the uh, integral. I know this is going to be an integral of, well, psi star, my psi is here. In, in the range that I care about, but in here, 0 to L over 2, I'm going to be, uh, what is it? Square root of 12 over L cubed. 12 over L cubed x times, that's my psi star, psi to b star, and then my psi of x is just this constant, square root of 2 over L dx. And my limits of integration, again, it, I'm taking the product of these two, so that's going from 0 to L over 2. That's my, that's how I'd write this down. And this is one that I can actually do visually, even if you're not really an integral person, or if, or if you're lazy, we can draw a picture. Let me, let me do a quick sketch. If I draw a picture, same as these things, my product function, if this is a, what is it, psi e star times psi, and this is x, and this is l over 2, there's my, uh, there's my coordinate axis, and I can say minus L over 2, but I don't much need it. If I multiply them together at every point, well, any point x less than 0, the product of these two is 0, right? Mm, well, it's just 0 over there. Once I get to here, I've got a constant. Oh, any point greater than this is going to be 0. No, okay, 0 over there, 0 over here. In between, well, I've got a constant, square root of 2 over L, times this function, it times this triangle, it's just going to be a taller triangle. It's going to be something like where this height is going to be, what will it be? Square root of 2 over L times this will be square root of 24 over L to the fourth, or let's see, square root of 24 over L to the fourth, eh, that looks gross. Uh, do I have a value for that that I did? Well, I'll just write it down. This is the square root of 24 over L to the fourth. What an annoying thing. I can simplify that if I want to, but that's my, that's my function. That's the product of these two things. It's a product that matters. And having drawn that, I guess I can just write down what the answer is, can't I? Because that's the, the, the area under the curve. This thing is going to equal the area inside area under the curve, which is 1 half times the base, which is L over 2, times the height, which is the square root of 24 over L to the fourth. Uh, 1 half base height. That sounds right. 1 half times base times height. I'm worried about this. I am actually quite worried about this. Maybe I should have just worked out my math after all, huh? Um, okay, so we've got this. Uh, Oh, oh, my height is 24 over L to the fourth. I left out a step, I think. Uh, this was supposed to be a height. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I multiplied the wrong thing. I multiplied by this. I times L over 2. And it gives me uh, this square root of 3 over L that I drew over here. Okay, fixing this up. This height isn't squared 24 over L to the fourth. This height is... Uh, okay, quick double check. The reason I noticed I did something wrong was my units weren't working out. This should have come out dimensionless, but it was, my answer was turning out to depend on L. This is actually a useful lesson for doing physics problems. If you ever find something where the units don't work out, you know you've made a mistake. So my actual height was square root of 3 over L times the height of this was square root of 2 over L is square root of 6 over L squared. That's more like it. The square root of 6 over L squared or 1 over L times the square root of 6. Now my area is 1 half times the base is L over 2, times the height, which is the square root of 6 over L. The L's cancel out, thank goodness. And I'm left with the square root of 6 over 4. That's my area. That's my probability amplitude for this problem. This is much better. The L's canceled out. It was a problem earlier that they didn't. So if that cancels out, 
That's my probability amplitude, my quantum amplitude for this possibility of starting in state psi and measuring it to have energy E, so that means it would be in state psi sub E. The question is, what's the actual probability? Well, the probability is the absolute square of that amplitude, psi E bra with psi ket, absolute squared. Well, that's just squaring this thing. That's 6 over 16 or 3 eighths. And that's my probability. The statement is that if I start in this state, and this is my energy E eigenfunction, then the probability of measuring energy E is going to be 3 eighths for this state. Again, the, the way that worked, we started out by taking the energy eigenfunction, which I had normalized in advance for you. We take our initial state, make sure it's normalized too, and in, in principle, we might have to normalize both of them. Make sure this is a normalized state too, to find out what that normalization constant has to be. And then just evaluate this probability amplitude by doing an integral. If you work out the actual integral here, it's, that's the square root of 24 over L to the fourth that I had earlier. The integral of x is 1 half x squared. You'll get this same answer. You don't need to draw a picture, but drawing a picture is a slick way of doing it if you happen to have just squares and triangles and rectangles and things. You get an area under the curve, you square it, absolute square, and you get what the probability is. That's how quantum mechanics calculations work. And in principle, we could do this if there were other energy eigenfunctions as well. We could check those as well and see what, uh, what the prob probability would be for different functions of energy. And with that, that's the end of this example.